because once again you are welcome to the chemistry online class for this week today we are going to continue from where we stopped last week and we've been considering the following objectives at the end of this class i expect you to be able to explain the chapter principle i expect you to be able to discuss the factors that affect the equilibrium constant of a chemical reaction and lastly i expect you to be able to discuss the application of equilibrium to chemical industry the charter principle take note every reversible reaction reaches its own specific equilibrium under a certain set of condition this equilibrium state is dependent on one temperature of the reacting system two pressure of the reacting system and three on the constitution of the reacting system a change in any of these factor will always upset the balance of the system, therefore causing a shift in the position of the equilibrium. These factors and their effects on the equilibrium system is studied by Lichata and he came up with a principle which is called the Lichata principle. This principle states that if an external constraint such as a change in temperature, a change in pressure, or a change in concentration is imposed on the chemical system in equilibrium, the equilibrium position will shift in such a way to annul or neutralize the effect of the constraint. Note, the principle of Lichata is of great importance in the chemical industry. Because one, it helps us to define the optimum, that is the best condition for a chemical process to occur. Number two, it helps us to reduce reversibility rates. Number three, it helps us to predict the effect of an alter factor on the equilibrium position of untried reaction. We are looking we are going to examine the effect of these factors one after the other. Firstly, effect of temperature. Take note, for a chemical reaction in equilibrium, increase in temperature will always favor endothermic reaction, while decrease in temperature will favor isothermic reaction. Recall, endothermic reaction is that reaction that takes heat from the surrounding, while isothermic reaction is that reaction that gives heat house to the surrounding. So, when the system is in chemical equilibrium and the temperature is increased, the endothermic reaction that we absorb it is called into play. Why? If the temperature is reduced, the endothermic reaction that we lose heat away from the system is called into play. Now, for us to properly apply this, we must understand which part of the reversible reaction is exothermic and which part of the reversible reaction is endothermic. Now, if you look at the two examples or the two chemical equations which I gave below, you discover that for in chemical equation A, the change in enthalpy is positive. When the change in enthalpy is positive, then the upper reaction is an endothermic reaction. That is, the forward reaction is endothermic that, and the backward reaction is exothermic. But if the change in enthalpy is negative, if the change in enthalpy is negative, I stress, it means that the forward reaction is exothermic, then the backward reaction is endothermic. So therefore, in example one, if the temperature of the reaction is increased, the equilibrium position will shift to the right to favor more of the production of nitrogen for example. While if the temperature is reduced, the equilibrium position will shift to the left to favor more of the production of nitrogen and oxygen. In the second example, whereby you have the forward reaction as exothermic, an increase in temperature will shift the equilibrium position to the left, favoring the production of sulfur dioxide and oxygen. While decrease in temperature will now shift the equilibrium position to the right, favoring exothermic, that is more of the production of the sulfur six oxide gas. Effect of change in concentration. Now, effect of concentration arises when one of the reacting spices, either that of the product or the reactant of the system in chemical equilibrium is altered. What do I mean by this? If one of the products 
is removed or one of the yatans is removed or any of the product of yatan is being added, the equilibrium position will be affected. Now, let's understand this better. If one of the yatans is added, if more of one of the yatans is added, or part of the product is removed. Take note, the equilibrium position will shift in such a way to favor the replacement of the product that is removed. Or we react in such a way to reduce part of the atom that is increased. Why also on the other hand, if part of the product is increased, and some of the atoms is removed. The equilibrium position will shift in such a way to favor the production of part of the atoms that has been removed. Let me explain this. Let's look at this chemical equation given as an example. If you remove part of sulfur four oxide when the system is in equilibrium, you find out that the products we we had in such a way to replace the sulfur four oxide which you remove that is to say the equilibrium position will be shift to the left to favor production of more of sulfur four oxide and oxygen in order for the equation to attain equilibrium for the reaction to attain equilibrium again or if you increase one of the concentration of sulfur four oxide and oxygen then the equilibrium position will shift to the right to favor more of the production of the sulfur six oxide so therefore removing or adding any of the product of the reactant affects the equilibrium position let's take note of that Effect of change in pressure. Take note, change in pressure will only have effect when one, one of the reactants or product in the reversible reaction is gaseous. If none of them is gaseous, pressure has no effect. Number two, the total number of moles of gaseous molecules on the reactant side must not be the same as the total number of molecules of gaseous on the product side. If they are the same, pressure has no effect. Now, take note of this again. Increase in pressure always favor the side of the reaction with the lowest number of moles. Why decrease in pressure will favor the side with the highest number of mole. Mind you, we are not considering either the solid and the liquid. We are only considering the gaseous substance on either side of the reaction. A good example is the reaction between sulfur 4 oxide and oxygen to give sulfur 6 oxide gas. If you look at that reaction carefully, you have two mole of sulfur four oxide and one mole of oxygen. That means on the reacting side, reactant side, we are having three moles. Three moles. Why on the product side, we only have two moles of sulfur six oxide gas? That means that the numbers of moles on different sides of the equation are different. Therefore, increase in pressure on this reaction we shift the equilibrium position towards the right to favor more of production of the sulfur six oxide gas. While decreasing pressure, we shift the equilibrium position backward to favor more of the production of sulfur four oxide and oxygen. The pointers of equilibrium constant on chemical industry. One, it helps to minimize the cost of production by ensuring cost of running the plant is not too high. 
and the starting materials are she in as much as possible that we know how the equilibrium constants affect the reaction based on alter conditions therefore we can condition ourselves to ensure that the one of the plants is not expensive that is to say we limited the numbers of reaction or the number of materials we are using we can use few materials to achieve high yield of product number two it helps us in maximizing the yield of the product like i said by shifting the equilibrium position in the desired position in as much as we know what and what to alter then we don't have to stress ourselves with our material in place we know what to do three it helps to reduce time we don't have to waste time start trial by error reaction we trying to vary one or two conditions since we know what to do with this we have come to the end of the class for this week uh by any time we meet in the next class i will expect us to take these assignments the physical that chemical equation is the reaction between carbon dioxide and oxygen to give i mean carbon dioxide and oxygen to give carbon dioxide we are to state the effects of one temperature increase in temperature on the equilibrium constant of the reaction two the effect of reduction in pressure on the equilibrium constant of the reaction number three we are to also state the effect of removal of part of the oxygen on the equilibrium position of the reaction and lastly also state the effect of the increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide on the equilibrium position of the reaction till we meet in the next class especially to stay safe and please remember to submit this assignment to my whatsapp number which still remain as 080-34-18-7868 Thank you.